Alec Baldwin and Robert De Niro. You know that Robert De Niro had his uh, seventh child at the age of 79? Yeah. This week. So now we know, I guess, neither him nor Alec Baldwin are firing blanks. Cancel. Culture. Podcast. Welcome back to Cancel Culture, the podcast where we talk about sometimes taboo things, sometimes we just talk, and then we try not to get everybody canceled, including my old white dad, who is unfortunately on this podcast. Um, We were just talking about uh, movies and R rating, and I do think that that's worth mentioning because what's the organization that rates movies, Father? The MPAA. The MPAA is a really fucked up organization. Totally. um, Made of like priests who well, then find out right like they're basically so i made a i made a documentary about this called this wait before not we rating. get into your whole diatribe there there's <laughs> there's there's a bunch of fucked up people who rate movies based on arbitrary things that they claim to be inappropriate or appropriate including but not limited to like male versus female genitalia are rated differently because you know women are gross it's and less, disgusting right. it's <laughs> less traumatizing to see a vagina than it is to see a penis which i would argue is wholly phallic. yeah well, I think and, it's the opposite. and, and uh, interracial sex is rated heart more harshly than really uh, white and white yeah, sex we can't uh, let homosexual gay sex versus homosexual sex and it's, and really that and the, the entire thing is so the mpa is owned by the movie studios the seven movie studios which now includes netflix and they make the rating system to benefit their movies versus indie films. Right. Ugh. So talk about cancel culture. They are literally like the, they are literally canceling culture and they have such a um power over everything. Like you think about how that could affect the distribution of a movie, like a small indie movie gets rated r and then you know tons of theaters won't take it it's crazy well, anyway well uh, crucially if you get an nc-17 you can't advertise the film anywhere <gasps> and uh, and to J- jamie's point earlier um the the uh, raiders are all they work for the mpa and they have no training they just start rating the appeals board if you get a rating and you want to appeal it that's where there's a catholic priest and a Protestant evangelical uh, pastor on not the, the evangelicals. Yeah. <laughs> also, Wait, so, um, don't both those churches have issues with pedophilia? pedophilia? Yeah, um, a little bit. Yeah, but pedophilia is rated NC seventeen. So, <laughs> <laughs> um, but interracial sex is well. Cr- crucially, <laughs> like you can gun down a hundred people in a movie; it'll get a PG thirteen. But boys don't cry which showed oral sex and didn't even actually show the oral sex, just showed a woman the idea of wiping, it. literally just doing this after going down on another woman, NC-17. Right. Um, I think they're against seeing gay sex on screen because it turns them on too much, right? The priests. <laughs> might be. Uh, might be. And they don't want to see, they don't want people to see how much they enjoy it, you know? What was it's... your first, uh, like, rated R movie, Mariana? Oh, I, cl- I remember this clearly, vividly, vividly. <laughs> Um, what was it do you remember red red that one i was seven wait what 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 movie is this red wait red like with bruce willis yeah that's a good movie oh i was thinking lots of shooting yeah i was seven or (laughs) that's the rated r (laughs) i remember thinking it's it was hilarious. Is it rated R? I feel like it. Yeah, that fits right. really well with your personality. Seven-year-old I, Mariana thinking I Red was hilarious. How it many people funny. die in that movie? My dad and I watch that every year together. Oh, there's really? a Red too. Oh, also. Tradition. Yeah, I know. Well, well he really likes like John Wick and stuff too. But continue. John Wick is good. Not the third one. Um, my first one was The Hangover, which my parents like bought and wow. watched with each other. I don't know what I don't know what grade I was in. But I definitely snuck it in my, in my middle school. I like waited till my parents went to sleep. And then I went and put it on the giant TV in the basement. And I sat right in front of the TV with the volume on like two and watched it. And then one, I was like, first of all, that was dumb. I don't understand why this was like such a taboo thing. And second of all, I was like, it was kind of racist. And then I went to bed very late. And, you know, as an adult, I've rewatched it. And I think there are some funny bits in there. But as a child watching it, I was like, I didn't get all the hype because it was like such a huge movie and everyone loved it and I wasn't allowed to watch it. 
Yeah. Sorry, mom, if you're hearing this, I don't think I've ever told them. I used to sneak movies all the time. Like ones that I was forbidden to watch. I would wait until they went to sleep. It's not like you were dealing cocaine out of your bedroom. You watched a movie. I mean, damn. (laughs) (laughs) I remember my first rated R movie. This is a great story, actually, because you were there, dad. Uh, Spring Breakers. In middle school, I believe it was the seventh grade. I was 12. And my friends and I all really wanted to see Spring Breakers, which for those of you who don't know, is that horrific, terrible, James, terrible, 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 movie. terrible. Speaking of problematic, uh, James Franco in dread, in like cornrows and a grill. So many um, things it, wrong it had, with speaking of Selena Gomez, it had Selena Gomez, Vanessa Hutchins, the girl from Pretty Little Liars. And Lucy the Hale. Girl from Sweet Life on no, Day. no the oh that's yeah, really bad that's, oh lord yeah. it's so bad that is... no it was um not lucy hale the the blonde girl the one who played hannah oh yeah yeah yeah. Uh... she's gay we love her but she was in this movie and it was bad <laughs> uh... a lot of good people were in the movie it's a lot of good people were in the movie fun, terrible, terrible fucking, fucking movie. movie but anyway so my friends and i in seventh grade were like desperate to see this movie for ashley some benson. Fuck- ashley benson thank you paul um for some fucking reason and we couldn't get tickets, um, obviously, because it was rated R and we all were 12 and looked 10. So um, my dad came with us, bought the tickets. And his plan, if I recall, was to come in with us, like get us get seated the and then out. leave. But then you were allowed to leave. I was not. They would not allow The me usher leave. wouldn't let him leave because yeah, he's like, you he left all those minors in there. Yeah. He's like, you can't leave all those minors in but, there. By the way, which is which is less appropriate? Me leaving you there to watch a movie by yourself or forcing a middle-aged man to sit with a bunch of young women to watch that fucking movie? <laughs> it was yeah. horrible. I felt creepy Literally. sitting there. Yeah, and all of my friends and I instantly well, regret. Maybe that was their intention, so I that you remember that feeling next time. It was a, it was not, a yeah. yeah, so next I time also... you remember not to purchase those tickets. <laughs> Keep that feeling. Don't buy those minors. <laughs> They're rated R tickets. It's awful. insane. But my anyway, first, that was my first. My, experience. my first rated R movie. This is and this is kind of tells you a lot about me. My father loved to torture me. There was no love in it. He just loved to torture me. So he went to, he took me to see, I don't remember how old I was, but not old enough to see the movie Scanners. Have you ever seen this movie? No, but it sounds Hey, terrifying. Paul, can you Google Scanners head blowing up, Jif? Oh, I think I know what you're referring to. If you've ever seen that guy who does this and on the yeah, internet, I like it's I a famous Jif about. now. And it was so disturbing. I didn't sleep. I still, now that I've said that, I won't go to sleep tonight. Like I was Aww. so disturbed by that. Yeah. Yeah. That. His head blows oh, up. Oh God. All right. Wait, why did his head blow up? And it's about these mind control people. So he's controlling his mind to the point where that guy's head blows up. So like as a little and you're like, uh, I'm gonna I wear think my I was 10. I think aluminum I aluminum hat. Yeah. Okay, well, fuck that terrible. guy. Um well he's well, dead, so. okay, oh. fuck that guy. <laughs> Oh God! Poor well, baby Evan. Baby Evan watching people's heads explode. Wild. His head nearly exploded. It was, it was twelve. Um, I speaking of our childhoods. Um, I really like credit SpongeBob with a lot of my humor. But I was thinking about how SpongeBob An interesting definitely segue. Yeah, well, I try to bridge the gaps. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, but SpongeBob was responsible for a lot of my sense of humor. And um, I realize there's a lot of adult humor on this show. Like, yes. I still watch, I watch SpongeBob a lot still. My friends and I, every time we hang out, the night ends with watching at least three episodes of SpongeBob. And <laughs> It's very, it's, there's something for everybody. It stays funny, especially the first three seasons. I mean, the later ones, they change the animation and, you know, but, but the great, early That's ones, what great cartoons really do. I mean, Bugs Bunny, uh, Tom and Jerry, SpongeBob SquarePants, all great, uh, fairly yeah, odd humor parents, for adults. Both sides, yeah. Um, yeah. But I was wondering, you know, in lieu of our podcast here, if there were any like slightly problematic jokes um kids tv shows have a lot of problematic jokes yeah. and they impact your brains so let me show you this clip that i found which i still have trouble with because i think it's hilarious you 
You can't talk to my son that way. Who do you think you are? I'm Plankton, you old hag. And your son smells like boogers. Hey, you can't talk to my wife that way. What do you think this is? I think it's time for you to lose some weight, fatty. That's what it is. Hey, you can't talk to my grandson like that. Someone ought to put you in a mental hospital. Someone should put you in a box floating down the river, Grandma. <laughs> You're probably right. <laughs> it's what was so par- wait what was problematic about that i mean it's not problematic There's... but like you know the fat, fat shaming, fat shaming. Fat shaming yeah, but plankton is, but plank- i know but plankton is in in he- inarguably evil like so of yeah. course he's going to be a fat phobe and an ageist yeah no i agree i think there are like other clips too i love spongebob i think this is hilarious still i just wanted to get everybody's input on it because i think it's really funny still and i feel weird laughing at it sometimes yeah i mean look you want problematic go to the cartoons of my youth they are racist as fuck Mm -hmm. like so racist like i'm embarrassed and i i knew every word to everyone and they were just racist misogynist Mm -hmm. homophobic Terrible. Yeah, like Pepe Le Pew. Uh, <laughs> Super rapey. I used to think he was so, so rapey. Funny. So rapey. <laughs> what does Pepe so Le Pew rapey. look like? I can't remember. He's a skunk. Uh, Google uh, Pepe Le Pew uh, and uh, Pepe you Le know, Pew. kissing mm, the, mm, kissing mm, the cat. Mm, yeah. mm, you can mm, literally see her like... trying to run away. And he's like, no, 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 no. I will give oh, you all these kisses. Yep. Oh, God. Yep. Oh, her. yeah. Look at her. And the cat is never interested. Not a single time. Ever. So. Oh, oh, that one looked cute. Yeah. And it's not like, hey, I'm into you and she's not that into him. It's like, I'm going to rape you. And he she's stalks like, her. No uh, more. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He'd it's like hide in the flowers and pop out. I, I think they actually showed that as evidence during Trump's rape trial recently. <laughs> this, is, <laughs> this is a recreation of what happened in the Bergdorf Goodman's dressing room. Yes. Um, oh my goodness. Well, speaking of um, duos. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> Stretch. You're getting worse at the segues as we go along. Oh, it's time to try to connect things. I'm trying. It's hard. We're very non sequitur Um, But, you know, speaking of duos. <laughs> he says it again. Break I don't fucking duos. know. Somebody Doubling else to make a right. connection to our game. I don't know what's happening. I don't know what the game is. Me okay, either. well, I'm just going to talk about how we're going to play Speaking a game of now. completely something unrelated. We're going to play a game that I created called Two Peas on a Pod. Oh, you the created game, this? Yeah, I created this one this week. Cool. I gave Paul the week off. I like um, the graphics. That, uh, well, it's just our logo and then a, um, a stock image of a microphone, but thank you. Um, I, I created this game called Two Peas on a Pod, and it is where I show you two photos, two photos of an unlikely pairing, like an unlikely duo, and then you have to come up with what their podcast would be called. So first up, we have John Mulaney and Zoe Deschanel with no bangs. No brains for heads. I was gonna say, I was gonna say mistakes were made. Mistakes. But no, no Jews allowed. Oh, gosh. <laughs> he left his Jewish wife. He's. Yeah, what does she, she have to do with that? Oh, she's a shiksa. <laughs> <laughs> um, how about I look like a property brother and I'm married to one? <laughs> Is, Is she, she really married, married to a property yes. brother? Yes, she's married to one of the property brothers. She Is she gay? No. They're not gay. Well, one of them isn't. <laughs> I don't know about the other. All right, next slide. <laughs> <laughs> Timothy Chalamet and an Italian Greyhound. Try to tell us apart. <laughs> On Kylie Jenner's leash. <laughs> Is he Please. dating Kylie Jenner? Yeah. Rumored to be, at least. How do they tell each other apart? <laughs> <laughs> One has bigger lips. <laughs> Woof. <laughs> Woof. <laughs> Next. Okay, Kim Jong Un's oh, nine year old daughter and Northwest, Kim Kardashian and Kanye's daughter. <laughs> Baby billionaires. Young, I'm powerful, sorry. and in therapy. Yeah, I was gonna say something with daddy issues. <laughs> Just daddy de- issues. Just daddy issues. I, I may destroy you. <laughs> oh, God. I may destroy you. Help. So you're, help. 
<laughs> well, once again, no Jews allowed. Yeah, so your dad hates Jews. <laughs> so your dad hates Jews, dot, dot, dot. I do feel I do feel bad for both of them. I will say I that. do, yeah. I feel they're like this very is a beautiful. Ch- child exploitation. Yeah. Well, the rumor well, is that rich, so. Kim Jong Un's daughter might be the next dictator. So, in a way, hashtag feminism, you know. Oh, you could I mean, say royalty. Northwest, Northwest might be the royalty. Yeah. We are yeah. royals. Who we runs the royals. world? Who runs the world? Girls. <laughs> royals. Royals. Next. Elon Musk and Stormy Daniels. <laughs> oh gosh. How to Pick survive Donald J. Trump. In Trump's pocket. In Trump's pocket. <laughs> the chode and the girl who saw it. <laughs> <laughs> it's like the girl with the dragon tattoos. <laughs> yes. Uh, I know this is a callback to the last episode we recorded, but another really good uh, uh, joke. Did I do this already from Shucked, which is I don't have, I, I may have lost my virginity, but I still have the box it came in. That's fine. <laughs> All right, next. Alec Baldwin Ooh. and Robert De Niro. Jesus, who shot who? Yeah. Um, that, uh, he, you know that you know that Robert De Niro had his uh, seventh my, child at the age of seventy nine. Yeah. This my, week, so now we know. I guess neither him nor Alec Baldwin are firing blanks. I was gonna say shooting oh. blanks. <laughs> they, shooting they, they, between them, they have like thirty five kids, don't they? Uh, yeah. Uh, or Wait, that's kind of terrifying. Ger- geriatric with a newborn. That could be the name of theirs. Next. Oh, <laughs> Evan Shapiro and Jimmy Neutron. Hair care. <laughs> Syndrome from Incredibles could be their guest. Yeah, yeah there you go. All right, you next. Put it up there. Oh, Elena gosh. Garner wow, and Missy for Big Mac. <laughs> Typecasting. Wow, typecasting. This was from a this was from a hater comment, so I I had to run with it. What was a hater comment? It. They, they called you, you geriatric Jimmy, Jimmy Neutron, Neutron, and cool. they called Elena Missy from, from Big, Big Mouth. Mouth, which why I is think that, is high why praise. Why is that an insult? Yeah. No, I think no, I think it was it was great. I'm so I think it was honored. A compliment. Yeah. I think yours would be young, black, and smart. Yeah. Young, black, and smart. Black excellence. Black oh, no, excellence. it could be it could be um, black in the time of interracial nerds because we both have very nerdy <laughs> educator just parents. Just interracial nerds would be interracial funny. nerds. That or how about that? Uh, uh, IQ is the new black. Yeah, IQ <laughs> that's good. Love, Love. <laughs> Mariana. <laughs> <laughs> more type, more type guys. Mariana Ryder and Wednesday Adams. Perfecting the RBF. Dead inside. <laughs> the who's dead killed, inside. Who's killed more turtles? Yeah, I was going to say, yeah. how to get away with murder. <laughs> That's a good one. That is a good one. By the way, they just, uh, what's her, they just cast, what's her name? Is the new Jenna Wednesday Ortega. Adams. Yeah. yeah. They already, what do you mean she they just great. cast her as Wednesday they, Adams? She already did it. It's out. Yeah. She already right. did it. It was great. I binged oh, it no, in one weekend. Oh, no, because they cast her as Beetlejuice. The, oh, that's what I meant. yeah, the new part. Oh, oh Evan was I getting there. Yeah. I know, it happens yeah. when you're geriatric. Damn. Just geriatric like Jimmy moment. Neutron. What are you going to do? Yeah, She's playing, moment. like, the same role again, though. I feel like that would be... I think that's exactly how casting works these days. They yeah, but the same when thing you get bored times. of that... Yeah. Yeah, yeah but she's I mean, following, I wouldn't... She's following Winona Ryder's career, which, until she went, you know, off the edge, uh, was great. Look, Jamie, I mean, she if they're going to typecast you yeah, for thousands and thousands of dollars every week, yeah, you I think you, you you'll can, get yeah. bored, but, you know, you'll also be rich. So, yeah. you know, trade off. You'll be bored with a lot of money to spend bored on exciting things. Yes. Um, what else? Paul. <laughs> <laughs> I forgot I made this I one. Paul Bogoski and bef- Steve Harvey. Before and after. Upper lip management. <laughs> I think that's all I have. Um, Amazing. I didn't do one of myself because I was gonna put like I was gonna put like a picture of me and an angel, but I thought that'd be too on the nose. What are your hater comments? (laughs) She's a Karen. (laughs) <laughs> Somebody called me a Karen, which really hurt. (laughs) She's the white lady. It's probably from when you were blonde. Yeah. Damn. Jamie, no one thinks you're a Karen. Don't take it. Does Mariana have any hater comments yet? No, because no, she was unmentioned. I'm literally the best. Who could hate this? Come on. 
<laughs> uh, only the turtles. Oh, power yeah, bottom, the... senior citizen Jimmy Newcrest. Who's the power bottom? Am I also you, the power everybody bottom? thinks you're gay. Yeah. Okay. I mean, <laughs> thank you. Uh, well, this was a fun episode. Until next time, this has been Cancel Culture. Cancel Culture Podcast.